Hello, good to have you back at Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany, and these are my two little friends, Pedro and Rosa, which you might already know from previous videos. So today's lesson is all about learning how to draw a portrait if you are an absolute beginner, if you have never ever drawn a portrait before. And my son Stephen, who you see here in an oil painting, will serve you as a model. And he also is the father of Pedro and Rosa. And now let's get right to it. So if you want to draw along today, what you are going to need is the photograph of a person seen from the front. If you want to use your own photograph, that's a very good idea because you know your own face best. But then uh, please ask somebody else to take that photograph because usually if you use your smartphone and you make a selfie, your face gets di distorted. So it's better to ask somebody to take the photograph of you from a certain distance. Okay, what you also need is fairly rough drawing paper, three different pencils if possible. Um, I have an HB, a 2B and a 4B and also a kneaded eraser. You can of course use other erasers if you don't have one, but these are the best for portrait drawing. And then you need transparent paper for making a template of your photograph. Um, just one warning, you can of course use photographs from the internet and if the person is of public interest you don't have to ask for their consent even for that. But as soon as you want to exhibit your drawing you have to have the person's consent to that uh, public exhibition. So please make sure that you only use photographs that you have permission for. Before I tell you more about the proportions of the face, I would like to demonstrate you how you can draw the most important features of your face, namely eye, nose and mouth. I've already prepared that for you and I'm going to start with the eye. Um, eyes usually are a sort of almond form and what you have to be aware of is that the lower part of the eye is always flatter than the upper part. Now if the person looks straight at you, you have to know that you will not see the full iris. It will be covered down here and up here by the lids and the pupils are in the center of the iris and what you also will see are lights in either iris and pupil or just in the iris depending on the light source you have. And above your eye you always have a sort of crease up here. It can have different forms sometimes with many women it's very round with men, it can look like a hawk's eye. But this crease is very individual and, and you have to watch it closely and try to get that correct. Okay, now the lower part of the eye, you see a bar and from here, the eyelashes grow. And above the eye, of course, you have the eyebrow and this is also very important for getting a likeness uh, of your face that you watch the form of the eyebrow very closely. Now as for shading, I'm going to do that with the 4B now so that it's faster. You have to know that the upper lid always casts a little shadow down on the iris and the white of the eye. So if you shade it the upper part of the eye has to be a little darker than the lower part. And of course you have to spare the light in the eye and leave that white right from the beginning. 
Now, if you have the light coming from here, you also have to realize, since the iris is sort of transparent, the light will shine right through and it will come out here again. So this part of the iris is lighter than that part of the iris. And around the iris, you always have a darker part. You also see that in blue eyes or green eyes. And the pupil is, is the darkest part of the eye. And you, you can do that with the 4B and press the 4B really hard so that you get a good black. The white of the eye never is really white. It's always sort of grayish or bluish. And in black and white, we of course have to shade it. And since it's a round object, you have a lighter part here and a darker part down there. And the tear gland is usually the darkest part of it. And the same over here. It gets darker towards the corner of the eye and lighter near the eye. Then the upper lid is always fairly dark because here you also see the eyelashes. And unless the person has really curved eyelashes, um, you don't usually see these eyelashes very clearly. Women, of course, they curve them upwards, but, but with men, you don't see much of the eyelashes. And the lower eyelashes, as I said before, start from this bar below the eye. And also, they are very scarce in many cases. So don't overdo that. And this crease, as I said, is very individual, so try to get it right. Same goes for the eyebrows. Be aware that they are single hairs. and watch closely in which direction they go. Okay, the next bit is the nose. And the nose is the easiest part of the face to draw because you don't have to draw the nose. All you have to do is shade the rest of the face towards your nose. And what you have to know about the proportions of the nose is that um, it is one length here and half and about half up here. So if you have the impression of your drawing that the nose is somehow not correct, please check if you have got the right proportions. And also what many beginners um, do not realize is that with grown-up people, you don't see much of the nostrils. Only if people have, you know, a real snob nose, you see more of it. And with babies, of course, you see the full nostril. But with grown-ups, it's always that the tip of the nose is a lot further down here. And you see only small bits of the nostril. Okay. And last but not least, the mouth. What you have to know about the mouth is that you have an indentation here, which is caused by the lip frenulum that you can feel with your tongue inside your mouth. And it makes the mouth curve here. And it also makes this line curve along. And the upper lip is almost always a little flatter than the lower lip and 
when the light comes from here or from here, you usually have the upper lip a little darker than the lower lip and you have a light hit the lower lip. This changes, of course, as soon as, as you have a smiling mouth, it will get straighter and you have to watch that closely as well. And also you can see the lip frenulum from outside because you have these two little hills or whatever you call them over your mouth and they, they go up to the nose. Good, so far for the main features of the face. And now I would like to show you some tricks how you can check whether you've got the proportions of your face right. Now let's have a look at the proportions of this head. Okay, if I do lines above my head, you can see that this part from crown to the eyes and this part from eyes down to the chin is about the same. And this still goes if the person has no hairs and has no beard, then of course the lines go a little upward, but still you have the eyes exactly or almost exactly in the middle of your head. Now, why do most people get that wrong? The problem is that most people concentrate on the face of a person and seem to ignore that the person has hair as well and that this hair also belongs to the head. And as soon as you leave out the hair and then you take measurements, you can see that the eyes are not in the middle of the face, but they are in the upper third of it. And that's the first mistake you have to check. Have I drawn my head from crown to chin and are my eyes in the middle of this full head? And when you want to check the other proportions of the face, another thing you can do is you can actually make thirds of your face and only of the face. And then you have one third. I'll lay that over it. And then you have one third for the forehead down to the eyebrows and then you have another third from the eyebrows uh, to under the nose or just between nose and mouth and you have another third for mouth down to chin. So if you think something might be wrong with your face you can also check the thirds. Are the thirds of my proportions correct? And the other thing almost every beginner makes mistakes with are the eyes. The eyes are a very important measurement for your face. And if you look at this eye and this eye, they are of course the same size. And with almost every person, another eye fits exactly between the two eyes. So if you think your eyes might be wrong, please check whether you have the third eye between the two eyes. And also you can check if the person looks straight at you, you have, whether you have another eye here to the edge of the face and another eye here to the edge of the face. And the other thing I wanted to show you are, are some more regularities which are in everybody's face. They can vary a tiny bit but if you're looking for mistakes in your drawing, this is also something you can use as a checklist. Okay, and this rule is from the inner corner of your eye down to the nostril of your nose, you have a straight line and also here. And you have a straight line from the middle of your eye down to the corner of your mouth and the same here. Okay, if I lay my transparent paper over it, 
you can easily see that. It can vary, of course, if somebody has a very small mouth, it's not quite exactly down below it, but it is a good reminder. Now, as for the neck, the neck always starts somewhere in the middle between the corner of your mouth and the edge of your face. So if you have the feeling that your neck might be too slim or too thick, that is something you can check. And also what lots of people get wrong is the height of the ears. They usually start at about the height of the eyes and go down to between nose and mouth. And they start around here. Also, depending if the person has, you know, big or, or small ears. But that is also something you can check whether you've got that correct. So as a next step, I would like to do a template of my face with you. I know that there are many people who would turn up their nose at uh, tracing. But I think for beginners, this is a very, very useful way for learning because especially if you're a grown-up beginner, you have memorized your face from when you were a child. And children focus on the face and do not focus on the full head. So what you do with tracing is you sort of learn the head by heart simply by doing the lines again and again and again in the correct way. If you start as a beginner and you make mistakes, you know, like the ones I just showed you, you will memorize the mistakes and not the correct lines. So I find there is no shame in tracing. I'm going to use transparent paper for tracing and I'm going to show you the advantage of that in a minute. You could also use carbon paper as well, but you will see that there is a big advantage in doing a template with a transparent paper. And what you do is the following. I'm not going to do the full face. It would take too long. You do the outlines of your face with an HB. And you do that on the correct side of your face. And then you take it, you turn it round, and then you take your 4B and do real black lines on the other side of the transparent paper. And then you turn it round again and take your 4B and press it down on your drawing paper. Now the big advantage is that for that you can use your pencils and you can easily erase them if you've got something wrong. And also, now if you have, let's say, shaded the hair and you didn't pay attention to the lines, you can very easily lay back Lay your transparent paper back on it again, and then you can see, ah, I got this wrong. And then you can press here again. And then you will know that you have to erase this part of your drawing. So I have already prepared my drawing, of course. I've done my template and I've uh, traced my drawing so that I can do a side size drawing now. Side size for beginners is ideal because you can easily compare from here to here, from here to here, whether you've done your shadings correctly. And as far as shading goes, you can do what we have already learned in the previous lessons. You can do hatching or cross hatching. You can do random lines. You can do dots, whatever feels natural to you. There is no right or wrong way. The only thing I would advise you with a face is that if you start shading, like for example, with the hair, I would follow 
the natural lines that you see in the hair. You could always use cross hatching anyway. But it's easier if you want to have lines later to do it like this. Now I'm going to let you watch me drawing the face without further commenting it. The only thing I would like to mention before is that I always start from light to dark. That means I do the lightest shade of the face first and then gradually try to go darker, darker, darker where it has to be dark. And I always start with the eyes of the person. This is a personal thing because once I have drawn the eyes, I have the feeling that the person looks at me and I can talk to him or her. And that makes it easier for me to draw them. Okay, and now I hope you have fun watching and we're going to look at the result when I'm finished. So I'm going to leave my drawing like that. You probably saw me using the brush for smoothing the pencil strokes. You don't have to do that. It's perfectly okay if in a drawing you see all the pencil strokes, but it would be also okay, of course, to do it a lot smoother so that you don't see any of the pencil strokes. Anything you like is fine. I hope the tricks I showed you will be helpful for you. And I surely hope that you will join me again for the next lesson. And next time, we're going to paint this portrait. Until then, have a very good time and see you soon.